So whenever I go through and do my sorting or my culling for the season, I like to try to make at least one video. And I don't want to do videos of the same variety every single fall and spring. So I thought this time I'd work on the white crested cuckoo pullets. I've got 12 here and we're going to go through them and make some general observations. The thing with the cuckoos is you want them to be nice and evenly barred. Uh, typically they're going to have a pretty good body type because they come from white crested blacks and those are uh, some of the best as far as type for Polish. So also with that you're going to expect a very large crest on them. You may notice they have light legs. That's because the barring gene does not allow the pigment in the legs to come through all the way. So when they wrote the standard ad to actually explain that. Unfortunately it's getting close to dark here and it's getting a little chilly and the girls are wanting to go to bed for the night here so they're not all posing the best. But um, like any other white crested variety you really have to pay attention to your flight feathers and your tails because the more white that there is in the crest you start seeing positive white in other parts of the body and uh, you'll basically have to handle each one, spread their wing open and their tail and take a good look at them. This one here in particular I know she's got some white in her flight feathers. Another thing about her is she's got kind of a divot here in the crest and uh, I try to keep that to a minimum because as the crest gets larger that becomes more pronounced. This one's crest isn't nearly as large as some of the others. Her barring on her tail is pretty decent though. The barring on this one almost gives the feathers a laced look so I'm not real enthused about that. Here's another one that has uh, kind of that split in the middle of their crest. It's not as noticeable on the females but you'll definitely notice it on the males if she turned to face us here. But she has a really good tail spread usually. This pullet I find her to be overly dark. Um, her flight feathers in particular are way too dark. Again, she's got that divot and what that partially is, is that's where the comb would be. And this is where breeding for a lack of a comb comes into play or a very small comb. Um, she also has a smaller crest than a lot of these other ones. This one's carrying her tail rather decently spread. And another thing I look for on these birds is when I come across one that's all picked like this because typically speaking all of these birds were in groups that were about the same number of birds so the ones that are getting picked are the ones that are at the bottom of the pecking order. but she does have pretty nice uh, barring on her tail. This one I think is a little too dark in the flights. And she's a younger bird so I might hold her back just to give her more time. She's one of the youngest ones up here whereas some of them you can see their wattles are starting to redden up. They're getting ready to lay. And normally I'd go a little more in depth, but uh, like I said, it's getting dark out. So I got to start making my selections and getting these birds back together. And unfortunately, I don't have an extra set of hands tonight to help me with that. So we're going to have to call this good. And you'll just have to wait till uh, a later time to see which birds I pick to winter. And just remember, just because I pick a bird in the fall doesn't mean I'm going to breed it. Uh, typically, I will pick several birds to winter and then I will go back through in the spring 
and select from those for my final uh, breeding stock. And that's pretty true of most show breeders, I think. So while prices may be better in the fall, you're probably gonna get a better quality bird in the spring when you go to buy them. But anyhow, thank you for watching. Have a good one.